In this SNP, we will be working with Windows services in PowerShell. First, to get a list of services on the current machine, we're going to run get service. To get a particular service on the current machine, we'll run get service dash name bits. This will return the bit service with its status, name, and display name. If we run get member against the get service command line, we can see a list of useful properties and methods available for the service controller object that gets returned. We can start, stop, as well as look up the status, start type, and service name. To get the full list of properties available from the service object, we're going to select object star, and that will return all of the properties. Here we can see the status, service type, and name, as well as the machine that it is running on. Next, I'm going to pull a list of services that are in the running status. You can also do the same thing for services in the stopped status. To pull a list of services that are currently disabled, we're going to use the startup type equals disabled. Next, I'm going to get the list of services that are running on a remote server by running get service computer name server one. I can also filter by status or start type. So I'm going to get the services on server one where startup type is equal to disabled. If I select all the properties for that remote service, you can see that the machine name is now filled in with server one. This can come in handy if you are pulling multiple services from multiple servers. Now that we have pulled information about services running on a machine, I'm going to move on to interacting with those services. If we get service bits, we'll notice that it's in the stop state right now. To start that service, we're going to run start service name bits. And we can now see that it is in the running state. To stop the service, we'll just run stop service name bits. And now the status is set back to stopped. There is also a restart service method that we can run on the service if we don't want to manually run stop then start service. You can see that the service is in the running state status now. Next, we are going to interact with services running on remote computers. First, we're going to get service bits from server one, and we'll notice that it's currently stopped. Now to start the service, one would logically think that to do that, we would run start service dash name bits dash computer name server one. If we run that, however, you'll notice that an error gets thrown. A parameter cannot be found that matches parameter name computer name. Start service does not have a computer name parameter. So how do you then start a remote service? To do that, we're going to use the pipeline. We're going to run get service name bits, computer name server one, and we're going to pipe that to start service. And you'll see now that the service is running. We're going to do the same thing, except we're going to stop the service on the remote server. The bit service is now currently stopped. Next, I'm going to talk about storing service objects in variables. First, we're going to store get service name bits in the variable name service. We can see that it is currently stopped. We can then pipe that variable to start service to set it to running. I'm going to stop the service again, and we are going to store that in the variable again to see that it is stopped. The next thing I want to show you is what would happen if something outside of your script were to change the status of a service that you're interacting with. I'm going to store the service bits in the service variable, and we can see that it's currently stopped. If I were to then start the service, and you can see now that the service is actually running. However, our variable does not know that. As far as the variable is concerned, that service is still currently stopped. If you run get member against that variable, you'll see a method called refresh. We're going to use that to refresh the variable and update it with the current state of that service. So if we run $service.refresh and then display that variable, you can see now that it updated the variable to say that the service is running. That was working with Windows services in PowerShell.